How's it going everybody? My name is Anthony Miranda. I'm a licensed and practicing attorney in the state of California. And in this video, we will be covering California CCW laws. So my goal for this video is to give you guys some foundational knowledge on uh, California CCW laws, the process, the application, uh, what is good cause, um, some general rules that apply to California CCW laws. There will be some foundational general rules, but there are also going to be some caveats along the way that I will address. So quickly, let's talk about uh, carrying a concealed firearm. Generally in California, it is illegal for you to carry either a loaded or unloaded firearm, whether concealed or open. You are permitted to carry a firearm concealed if you have been given a California CCW permit. And a permit to carry concealed can be granted to an individual either by your local county sheriff or by your local uh, police chief. In California's eyes and in a lot of these law enforcement agencies' eyes, it is not a right for you to be able to carry a firearm concealed. Instead, they considered it to be a privilege. And so there are three uh, main elements for you being able to receive your CCW permit in California. So the first element is that you have to have good moral character. And so the second element is good cause must exist for you to be issued the permit. Third, you must meet the residency requirements of either the county or city in which you are applying for. And fourth, you must have completed the appropriate firearms training. And so let's break down each of these requirements. First, we're gonna look at your good moral character. So what does it mean for you to have good moral character? First, there are some general no's for when someone will not be issued a CCW. So those are the easiest ones to look at. So first, you can't be a person who's been con convicted of a felony. If you've been convicted of a felony, you will not be granted a CCW. If you are addicted to any narcotics, uh, drugs, anything of that nature, you will not be granted a CCW. If you've lost your uh, gun rights uh, due to a domestic violence uh, conviction, you will not be granted a CCW. And also if you've been diagnosed with some serious mental illness, you will not be granted a CCW. So those are general no's when you will not meet that good moral character requirement. And off the bat, if you fall under any of those categories, it will be an easy way for the sheriff or your local PD to not issue a CCW. There are also some other considerations that go into good moral character. If you have a lot of DUIs um, on your record, potentially even if you've had a lot of arrests in your recent record, uh, things of that nature might prohibit you from not meeting that good moral character requirement and therefore you will be denied, denied your CCW. So generally, it's probably going to be easy for you to meet your good moral character requirement because a lot of you who are applying for your CCW are lawful citizens. You lawfully want to possess and carry your firearm, so you're not going to have a whole lot of issue with the good moral character requirement. Another um, element that is easy to prove is the residency requirement. So a lot of you aren't going to have issues meeting the residency requirement because you are going to be applying for the county or city in which you reside. And I know for me, um, in order to prove that I reside within the county in which I applied for, it's, I had to you know, generally give them, I think, my, um, my ID and some other proof of residencies and to prove that I lived in the county in which I was applying. So every county is different. I'm sure that they have some paperwork requirement, but that element is generally easy to meet. The element that a lot of you will uh, have some issue meeting, depending on the county or city in which you live in, is going to be proving that good cause exists for you to be issued the CCW permit. And so we're gonna spend a bulk of our time looking at this good cause um, requirement that is placed on individuals applying for a CCW. So good cause, let's look at generally what good cause is considered in California. So good cause generally has been um, meant to mean that there is a clear and present danger ex that exists for you or someone in your immediate family and that carrying a concealed weapon will be able to mitigate that danger. And so the issue with good cause in California specifically is that a lot of counties vary based on the degree of good cause in which they require. So in a scale, you have some counties that are very easy to meet the good cause requirement Generally, these uh, counties or cities will only require that you indicate you want your CCW permit for self-defense or for the protection of yourself or someone else. It's very easy to meet it. And with a well-written application, you can easily meet this requirement. And a lot of the times you won't have, in these counties, you won't have a whole lot of pushback from the local law enforcement for the good cause in which you put on your paperwork. 
what you'll see is they vary in degrees. You have a dark green, which is super easy to meet your good cause, your good cause requirement. And then it goes all the way down to a dark red, which it means almost impossible for you to meet their good cause requirement. Essentially, you probably have to have some sort of in with the local law enforcement, um, with the local county sheriff. You must uh, be a, some sort of a magistrate. You must be some sort of political figure, something of that nature to um, overcome the overwhelming good cause that they require for their county. And so I recommend that you look at the map, determine what type of county you're in, and then tailor your application accordingly to what type of good cause is required. So for example, some of these counties that are yellow or bright red, you may have to indicate that you need a concealed weapons permit or a CCW to protect yourself because you're carrying large sums of money, um, valuable objects, uh, things of that nature. You might have to indicate some sort of threat to your life and therefore you're required or you should be able to uh, carry a concealed firearm to protect yourself because you have an immediate threat or immediate danger on your life, something of that nature. So if you are in a county that is green, dark green, maybe even yellow, you have more likelihood of being issued your CCW permit. So for example, I actually live in a green, um, bright green uh, county and the sheriff in which I applied for my CCW, they really don't require a whole lot of good cause. I went ahead and said, not only self-defense, but as an attorney, I deal with um, different criminals. I do some defense work, things of that nature. And so there might be individuals who have a vendetta against me, something of that nature I wrote in my application. And so, and it was found to be enough good cause to be issued my CCW permit. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. I would say just because you're in a green county, don't just say self-defense in the box and then just chalk it up as you're gonna be issued your CCW permit. It's always better to be more specific. So if you have a better rationale to be issued your CCW, I would recommend go ahead and put that in your application. You can still cite self-defense. So cite the self-defense like I did and then add something else also that heightens the good cause of, and the requirement for why you should be granted your CCW. So now assuming that you have good moral character, assuming that you meet the residency requirement, assuming that you have the appropriate good cause required by your county or your local PD, before you're issued your CCW, you must meet the firearms training requirements placed on you by either your county sheriff or your local PD. And these training requirements were mandated by AB uh, 2103. And this placed a specific training um, hour amount that California residents must meet to be issued their CCW permits. So for my training course, it was broken down to two days, four hour sessions. The first four hours we came in before we even hit the classroom, we were required to do a course of fire as mandated by our county. So this is another caveat. Every county has different course of fire requirements. So for example, my county, um, I had to shoot at three, five, and seven yards. I had to shoot, I believe, a total of 15 rounds and they only required that you actually hit 50% of your rounds within the C zone of the targets at three, five, and seven. And so for the course of fire requirement, you must actually qualify, at least in my county, you have to qualify with all the firearms that you want on your CCW permit. For my county, we could have up to 10 firearms on your permit, and every time you wanna put a firearm on your permit, you have to qualify with that firearm. So that's just something to keep in mind. Make sure you're proficient with every firearm you want on your permit and just keep in mind that when you go in that day, be prepared to qualify for with all the firearms that you want to have on your permit. So after we finished the course of fire and we got the little check off on our application, whatever it was, we went to the classroom and we sat there for four hours as they showed us slideshows, as they talked a bunch of nonsense, some very basics about firearms. And then we went home, came back the next day, it was rinse and repeat. With the second day, it was only new applicants because the renewals in my area are only required to do four hours. And so in the second session, it was only new applicants and we sat there for another four hours. When we were done, they signed off on our certificates and we were on our way. And so for my training course or training session for the eight hours, I think it was $120, something like that. It was not cheap. I think when all was said and done for me applying for my CCW, I was upwards of like $350, maybe even $400 before it was done. 
So California does not make it easy for you. It does not make it cheap for you. They are trying to do everything they can to make it prohibitive. So let's look at the application process generally. So when applying for your CCW, you have to do a paper application and these are fairly uniform in California. It's just a uniform application that you fill out and you submit to your local law enforcement agency that you're applying for. And the cost can vary anywhere between $100 to $200. Mine was on the higher end. I think it was like $180 for me to even just uh, put in my paper application. And then after your paper application is approved, I went ahead and did my training uh, session in between. I had the certificate, I went ahead and e-scanned it to them so they had my certificate signed off with the uh, firearms that I was going to have on my application. And so the next part of the application process is you're gonna have to set up an interview with the local law enforcement agency, whether the sheriff or the local PD in which you're trying to get your CCW permit from. And again, the interview process is going to vary depending on how prohibitive the county or the city in which you reside is. So for example, my interview process was no big deal at all. I walked into my local sheriff, I said I have an appointment, I filled out a paper that had I mean, three or four questions, gave it back to the lady, sat down. Five minutes later, a deputy came out, he asked me three questions, he asked me in the last like 90 days, have I done any drugs? I said no. He said, have I had any diagnosis of mental illness? I said no. He asked if I had never been convicted of a felony? I said no. And that was pretty much it. That was the extent of my interview. He went ahead and signed off on it. The lady pulled me into their office. We did my fingerprint. So during your interview process, you're going to be fingerprinted for your background check. You pay another fee. I believe that was $80 for the background check. Um, at that time, I took my picture for my CCW. So even in a county that I'm in that is fairly pro Second Amendment, it still took me upwards of 90 days to get the callback that I had been granted my CCW permit. This is again going to vary depending on what county you're in. Some counties are gonna be faster, some counties are gonna be slower. It just all depends on your law enforcement agency, also how quickly they can get your paperwork. So I have one more miscellaneous thing I kinda wanna talk about and I've seen a lot in the comment sections. Um, a lot of you have been asking on various videos I've done and that is, are you allowed to carry what California considers large capacity magazines with your CCW? And so in a very law school manner, I'm gonna say it depends. And it depends on the county in which you're in. There is not a whole lot of state guidance on this. So it's gonna come down to what your local law enforcement agency in which you were granted your CCW from mandates. So if they mandate that you can carry only up to 10 rounds in your CCW, then you can only carry up to 10 rounds in your CCW. Since your local law enforcement agency has been granted all the discretionary authority from the state, they get to dictate how and in which manner you carry your firearm. I agree this is ridiculous that they shouldn't be allowed to do that, but that is just the way the state of California operates. So this is something you're gonna have to look at um, I would recommend calling your issuing law enforcement agency or check their websites. If they do have something, it's likely they are going to expressly state that they have some sort of restriction. So one of the last things we'll kind of address is um, whether California has reciprocity with any other states. Some states do recognize California's CCW, and I'll put a link down in the details that'll show those states that do um, recognize California CCW permit, but California does not recognize any other state's CCWs. So if you're coming to California and you have a CCW permit, for example, in Texas, just because you have a Texas CCW does not mean you can carry a weapon concealed in California. California does not recognize that CCW. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. We're pushing quickly up to 8,000 subscribers. I never thought that you guys would enjoy these videos as much as if you have, and it's really motivated me to keep making these videos, to get information out to you guys, and to can you continually push uh, the Second Amendment issue in California. The best way to support the channel and support me in the videos that I'm putting out is to join the Patreon. Big thank you to all of you who have already joined the Patreon. Your support means a lot to me. Another way you can support the channel is using the affiliate links down in the details. Um, these are various affiliates, um, either Amazon affiliates, um, like Brownells affiliates, things of that nature. Another way you can support the channel is using the affiliate link down in the details to Vigilant Humble. They are a clothing company. They support our veterans. They support our law enforcement officers. And so they're an awesome company. They have great uh, clothing and sweaters. I love their sweaters. I bought like seven of their sweaters. They're really cheap and they're just a cool company. So show them support and also it helps us support the channel. So thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe 
and never forget, a nation that draws a great distinction between its scholars and its warriors will have its laws run by cowards and its wars fought by fools.